Hey everyone, um, so this video, um, before we get started, I just want to let you guys know this is going to be very trigger warning, very trigger warning, very trigger? Lots of triggers. Anyways, if you are part of the LGBTQ community or if you've known someone that's been part of it, this video might trigger you. Because um, basically what I want to do is I just kind of wanted to talk about my experiences. Um, so there's like this preconceived notion that as a lesbian, I wouldn't be experiencing any discrimination because everyone loves lesbians. They're always like, oh yeah, let's make them kiss each other. Everyone wants to watch women kiss each other, blah, blah, blah. Um, and, like, compared to, like, gay males, yeah, I mean, we don't have it nearly as bad. Well, I can't speak for the entire population, but based from my experiences compared to what I've heard, we don't have it nearly as bad, but that doesn't mean it's still not bad. And so I wanted to share my personal experiences, um, with people who have harassed me and things I've had to undergo because of my orientation. Um... And so these are some things that people have said to me. I just kind of wrote them all down. It's surprising how long the thing is. I had kind of weird feelings starting around like fourth grade. Um, which is really unfortunate because that timing is about a year after, a year and a half after I was sexually molested um, by a male relative of mine. And so a lot of people are like, oh, the only reason that you're a lesbian is because of that. Well, no, I've had boyfriends, thank you. I've had three boyfriends and countless girlfriends and I will tell you, I know what I like. That's a, already a really hard thing to deal with is just that by itself. So I never came out. Um, I knew for sure by ninth grade, um, but I still held on, like I still had my boyfriends between like seventh and 11th grade and I, tr I tried, <laughs> I tried to be normal. It was too much. So when I graduated high school and I went on to college, I started kind of feeling more confident with myself um, and with my orientation. I came out. Um, initially, my parents were not very accepting. Um, and it wasn't until my sister kind of talked to them that things kind of flipped around. Um, my parents were very, like, sweet to me, even though they didn't really understand it. They didn't really, like, agree with it or anything they still loved me um, which is way better than some of my friends who um, I have one friend who was literally kicked out of his house for being gay um, so I'm very grateful and I feel very exceptionally lucky Jackie and I started dating right after I graduated high school and we've been going at it since so <laughs> I think I could say after 12 years I know what I am here are Roughly about 20 years of experiences. So the first one comes from my grandma. And, okay, I have one for both of my grandparents. Both of my grandmas. So I have since cut ties with this grandma. Um, because it's kind of just been like this chronic ongoing problem. Where like she just. Like I know she's just trying to save my soul. But my soul doesn't need to be saved. And the negativity just grew to be too much. And so after some stuff that she said to me about how I need to forgive my male relative because he went to the church and because of like the things that she said to me, I have just decided to cut ties with her. I deleted her out of my phone. I blocked her. I haven't told her. I haven't told my parents. This is probably how they're going to find out. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I don't need that negativity in my life. On that side note though. If you guys leave a negative comment, I will just straight up delete it. So please don't. Like, I don't, we, we don't need this. Directly on my Facebook, when I posted a thing about gay marriage, I don't know when this was, but she said, in response to your posting on religion, specifically gay marriage, don't get caught up in those secular views. As we all know, there is a higher power. It was really hard for me not to do the, um the save thing there's a higher power <laughs> totally understand where she's coming from but at the same time it's like this is not something that other people would have to hear obviously because in the bible it doesn't say heterosexuals should go to hell she has also called me the devil's spawn and she's accused me and all my friends of being in a cult 
I at one point she even asked if I was on medications and that's why I was acting so crazy when I was in our house. So that's that grandma. Um, the other one is actually a lot longer. Um, so this grandma I lost when I had, right after I joined the military, she was actually, um, despite our kind of rockiness about this, um, like she was really important to me. Despite that, she still sent me this stuff. She said, it's important to keep your focus on the fact that Jesus paid his price for all of our sins and not to get distracted by the issues, meaning gay marriage, that in the long run are not important. My orientation is not important and my right to get married was not important because Jesus died for me. These ones are nice and easy because she emailed them to me, so I have, I have them. I am sorry that you're pursuing this lifestyle, meaning gay, okay, obviously. Love is a beautiful gift and I still believe that intimacy is meant to be shared between a man and a woman. If God chose that as his role model, then he knows heterosexuality is the best way. If you feel uncomfortable with boys, it may be because of the pain that you suffered from things that have happened. Jesus can heal you. Wait, Jesus can heal that pain if you let him. Cool? Yeah. Um, this email strand did not go well. That's the thing is that every member of the LGBT community has so many like little things in the bible that they know as like their comebacks like don't mix cottons don't mix seeds if a woman's not a virgin by the time she gets married then stone her or like just stuff like that you have your views and i respect your views i have my views respect mine and the thing is that i am christian i was baptized i went through confirmation like i did everything i identify as a lutheran Like, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. My sister and I went through everything together. The Pope said I'm good. <laughs> you can't hurt other people because of your views. And like, I'm not coming at that person and telling them that they're wrong. And I'm not telling them that they need to like adjust to me or else I might beat them up. But that's basically what happens to us. If we don't meet the criteria of other people, then they come at us. Let's continue. Uh, at my work, I had a man walk up to me. And this man and I were really good friends. Like, we got along. Everything was hunky-dory. I told him I was getting married. And he said, I don't think Jesus would want to come to your wedding. Needless to say, uh, the equal opportunity got involved. And he got in trouble. I didn't do it either. Like that's the worst part is someone else overheard and brought it up. I was, I, after a while of hearing this stuff, you just kind of are taught, like conditioned to just accept that people are going to be upset with you and that's okay. Like th their words are more important than your feelings and you really get crushed down. And I had gone to that point. And so when that man said that to me, I was like, I deserve it because I'm a lesbian. Let's talk about my ex-girlfriend's mother. Oh my god. That was hell. I was dating this girl for about three years in high school. Three years? That's a really long time. I also dated her brother and her brother's best friend, so that was awkward. But anyway, so I was dating this girl for like three years in high school. And we pass notes back and forth. And one day... I was over at her house, I was laying on her, like I had my head on her lap and we were watching TV and she was petting my hair and her little brother was like, oh my god. And so he ran up and told her mom that I was doing like lesbian things by laying on her lap. I was literally just laying on her lap, but come on. And her mother then went and snooped around her room while she was at school found all the notes we had put back and forth, which was so funny because I literally told her like the week before, like I have a feeling, get rid of those notes. And she's like, no, they're fine, they're fine. So they found the notes and I was talking to her today on Facebook and I was like, hey, what else do you remember about this time? And she's like, I remember they went through my closet and they found my stuff and after school, 
they drove me to like this weird field in the back and they were like what is this like what kind of like lesbian bullcrap are you doing and then they drove to my house and dropped off the papers to my parents and outed me to my parents i was not out of the closet at the time they told them that i needed therapy and that I was not to see their daughter again. My senior year was hell because of everything that this woman put me through because she caught me in a relationship with her daughter. And so, like, I got really depressed because only my parents are angry at me. And next thing I know, I'm in therapy. And then I'm getting put on medication that makes me feel even more depressed. And then next thing I know, I'm starting to want to harm myself. And it just really went very drastic and in the meantime I'm at school and they had these teachers looking at me like you're not allowed to go near her and like making sure that I was physically nowhere near her and it turned out that her mother had told them that I was threatening her life so when I was talking to her today apparently they took the notes to a cop after school to see if there was anything they could do to get a restraining order against me it was just absolutely insane the amount that came at me it didn't even end there this one time she was like hey uh just a heads up my mom said that she's gonna be waiting for you after school with a baseball bat in the parking lot so i immediately go to the principal i'm like uh hello this like 55 60 year old woman who is she's big she's a big woman she was like god she i don't know how tall she is she had to like she had to, she was a big ass woman probably like 300 pounds six foot something like that she's such an angry woman and so big and so aggressive and now i'm being told she's waiting for me in the parking lot with a baseball bat so i go to the principal and i tell him he ended up escorting me and my sister out early and then another time we went to a school play and my sister and i were leaving and her mom comes up it's like pitch black outside we're walking to my car and her mom comes up and starts like circling us and she later told um my friend oh the reason i was doing that is because i thought it was you well my sister and i are both 5'10 and my friend is 5'2 yeah and then another time she uh i was applying for the starbucks there were 12,000 people that lived in that town and there was only like really one shopping center there so i was walking to the starbucks and she comes rolling up in her car like really effing close like close enough that if i had kept walking because i didn't hear her i would have been clipped and she rolls down her window and just flips me off and she's just chilling out there with her flippy off and then she just kept driving like what the actual f man and like this woman was just absolutely insane my senior year I almost failed out of high school like it was just it was bad it was really bad and all because I laid on her lap and I was a lesbian <sighs> yeah I joined her in the time of don't ask don't tell um so I knew the risks when I went in I had no idea that they were going to get rid of it so I was like ready to do my six years and then skedaddle so during that time um, I asked Jackie to take a picture as a boy so I could show people like look this is my my significant other and we'd use like I'd say they I would never say him I was so dumb and like as soon as we got engaged which happened like six months six to six to seven months after I joined the military I was finally able to say my fiance which is much more gender neutral and so I asked her to take a picture as a boy she put on like the cap and looked very cute and I had all these guys that were like literally hitting on me in a school because that's what people do in a school they just go and they try to have sex it's terrible and I kept being like no no look I have a fiance look leave me alone um and like I just had to keep like lying and they're like oh well, what does he do what's his name I'm like Jack we weren't sure at the time how much the military listened to us like I was so convinced they listened to our phones they don't um and so like we had to come up with like keywords like or code words like crickets was how we said good night or i love you and stuff like that even after don't ask don't tell got repealed um like there was one time i was gonna go on a marriage retreat 
And when I reached out to them and I was like, yeah, I'd really like to sign my wife and I up for this marriage retreat. They're like, oh, I'm sorry. This is only for heterosexual couples. And it's like, okay, well, what marriage retreat can we go on? Because like they have these really awesome retreats to build your relationship. And I'm like, we don't cater to that. And then don't even get me started on like the whole transgender thing in the military. That's actually everything that I have personally experienced because of my orientation. That was my, that, that was my dark, dark video. Um, thank you so much for uh, sitting through it and yeah. Originally I was gonna do a try not to laugh at the end of this, but I'm just not feeling it now. Well, you guys stay safe out there. Stay you. Watch out for COVID. See you guys in the next one.